the thing that I hate the most is the hypocrisy of someone who dismisses any and all left criticism that they don't like or, the, or that that's that's too um, too hostile to those in power as Twitter <clears throat> bullshit. Uh, the hypocrisy of, of, of someone who does that and then is so obsessed with Carl Bayer <laughs> and Carl Bayer's tweets and a little graphic that Carl Bayer made that they doctor their own document just so they can get a single point on the board. One point. Just so they could be one for 13 instead of zero for 13 right now. I don't, I don't understand how Sean is pulling rank on anybody anyway. I mean, he's not some... I, I think like at this point he has some bachelor's degree in maybe statistics or political science. I can't remember what exactly it is. I know that he was going back to school for something. Um, but, you know, this isn't like some renowned political mind with like multiple publications to his name or something like this. This is just another poster who got some funding from the Tides Foundation and people like that. Yeah. Like That's why we know him. We don't revere him as some kind of... Uh, political mastermind or something like that. He's just a member poster. <laughs> you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of Benny Johnson a lot. Mm -hmm. Because Benny Johnson has like no talent, no intelligence whatsoever. And yet he mm. was a guy who, uh, for this brief period of time before he was fired for plagiarism. Again, yeah. and that was also another that was also another phenomenal moment in posting. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, before he was fired for plagiarism. He was held up as the millennial whisperer, as the guy because yeah. he wrote these shitty BuzzFeed articles that like supposedly like you know he cracked the content code, and then then that you know he he parlayed that you know after he got fucking fired uh, into a a job for for right wing media for for fucking you know just like it's, it's like Charlie Kirk too it's the same deal it's like you're just mm -hmm. you're just a young person who claims to have the voice the ear of other young people. And yeah. uh, so, so like you'll just like right wing billionaires will just give you money because they don't fucking know it. Like Sheldon Adelson does not know what a Twitter is, and Sean yeah. McElwee is just a guy who sees that himself filling that you know that that uh, uh, void in the market. There's nobody yeah. selling themselves as the guy who will. Uh, there's nobody else selling themselves as, as as the guy that you can just give money to if you want to pretend to be reaching out to progressives. The article, and I quoted this at the beginning of our conversation. This is uh, should this should mm -hmm. be good for right now. That are the article I referenced was from March of 2020. It was in the Atlantic. Here's a quote. Sanders should start thinking through what outlet he has to draw concessions from Biden. And it's not clear to me that continuing a presidential campaign that does not have a path to victory is one of those options. I think he should think soberly about the reality. I don't think there are any states right now he is favored to win. This was right after, I believe, Michigan, the Michigan primary, where... Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, not even half the delegates had been allocated at that point. It's also when COVID had just struck and there was some, you know, I don't want to say hope, but there was some feeling that the exigency of this crisis and the reality of what it meant for employer-based health, health insurance, you know, how, and how it was going to expose how tenuous it was, would shift the race in a meaningful way in Bernie's favor. And frankly, I think that it might have if the campaign had kind of leaned on that messaging, kind of talked more about the extent to which the Biden campaign was telling people to ignore CDC advice and go ahead to the polls so they could wrap this up and been more explicit about how, you know, frankly, you know, corrupt it was to pretend as though the race was over when, as you pointed out, Virgil, um, only half the delegates have been awarded. Remember, Cuomo was trying to, um, you know, cancel the New York cancel. election, the New York primary, and all of these shenanigans were going on. And there was a real narrative that could have been painted, frankly. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but there's a real narrative that could have been painted I, that could have shifted things for Bernie. Yeah. And here's Sean McElway as one of the members of the chorus calling it. Yeah. I wrote, I actually, uh, at, back in March when COVID was first ramping up, I wrote an article talking about Biden's potential weakness because of that. Mm. Um, and I was particularly concerned with the impact that not being able to execute a normal ground game and not being able to hold rallies and gin up enthusiasm 
because he had such a big enthusiasm gap with Trump. I was worried about all of that stuff, how that was all going to affect Biden. And that's stuff that wouldn't have hurt Bernie so bad because Bernie was much stronger on all those issues, had a much more enthusiastic base. And, you know, this is all this is all counterfactual at this point. We'll never know. But what we do know is that Biden won by a much slimmer margin than anyone expected him to win. Uh, you know, the people the people who were expecting him to win were expecting the blowout. And then the people who nobody was calling the uh, race this close. Yeah. If right. 50,000 votes in three states had gone the other way, Trump would have won. And not to mention yeah. the down ballot catastrophe, which can be laid squarely at Biden's feet, uh-huh. as I'm as far as I'm concerned. One more one more reference to Sean McElwee in the media. This is the Huffington Post. Signs have already emerged that Biden's campaign is reaching out to progressives. His team invited Sean McElwee, who runs a progressive think tank, Data for Progress, to its headquarters to talk climate policy on Wednesday. You know when that was? You know when that was? March 4th. Wow. March 4th. I So I had my first feud with Data for Progress back then around climate policy. Because you may remember that I wrote a paper with People's Policy Project uh, promoting international climate funding. And I noticed that on Data for Progress's scorecards for the candidates where they were rating everybody, they gave Biden the same scores they gave everybody else uh, on that. And I was like, you know, why are you not, you know, Bernie has far and away the best plan for international climate funding. How are you comparing him uh, investing $200 billion into this with Joe Biden saying, you know, maybe I'll pay the $2 billion that Obama pledged or something like that. And I could not get data for progress to change its scoring uh, at all. And so even back then, I feel like they were really sort of hedging their bets and they were really unwilling to go hard against Biden in a way that might have changed the race. So it's it's just hard to well, say. They definitely were not neutral, uh, it, 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 even though that's what the scoring stuff is posing as. They were definitely making decisions about what they were going to weight in their scoring system and what they weren't. Well, you've proven that you can actually get them get them to change <laughs> some of their information. One last quote. I've just been I've just been digging these up and man, they just get worse and worse. And I have to say it. <laughs> one more quote. One more quote. At the end of the day. Sorry, I don't know where this is. This is just someone posted this on Twitter. At the end of the day, someone is going to go against Biden or Kamala. And if the socialist left fully ends up lining behind Bernie against Kamala, that's going to be a longer term problem for the socialist left. Sean McElwee with the progressive think tank Data for Progress said, you don't want socialism to be seen as white male identity politics. And Warren is able to build a coalition. Warren is white. Warren, Warren is, is white. white, despite what she might Yo, have wh- believed white, from dude. her her grandparents' stories. <laughs> I, I, I'm so tired Yo. of this thing when white women are, are, are put on the same plane as people of color. White women are white. White women voted overwhelmingly for Trump. Do- Joe Biden <laughs> attributes his victory to white women. White women. White women is what he says all the time. White women in the suburbs. Like, what this is-, is this? Sorry. I'm sorry. This is the legacy of Clinton 2016. Clinton got every white woman, especially online, thinking that they are some kind of POC. Somebody's <laughs> abuela? Sister, sister Hillary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's exhausting. Like it was, I'm exhausted. They were talking that way before. That was the 2016 thing. 